where the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority has uh, indicated that uh, they are set to recruit up to 300 new employees in a bid to bolster surveillance in the aviation sector. Increased air incidents and accidents by mostly budget airlines this year has pushed the authority to carry out impromptu security visits to ensure compliance by the airlines. Our reporter Brenda Kirubo is keeping on top of that story. And Brenda, what do we know so far? Kenya Civil Aviation Authority plans to recruit at least 300 new staff to bolster security operations in the aviation sector. Joining me more in relation to this, we are joined by Captain Gilbert Kibe. He should be able to give us more details in relation to this. Thank you so much for joining us, Director General. So Captain Kibe, KCAA plans to hire at least 300 new staff. Exactly how does it plan to do this? At the moment, we are recruiting about 87. Uh, that is on the sh immediate short term uh, under the current organization structure that we have. But in the new organization structure that we are proposing for approval from the government, we'll be having 300 approximately new jobs. And these jobs are in the areas of technical personnel and professional personnel. So it will be in all areas of our organization, but in technical, over 100 will be joining the regulator. So that is for safety, security, and uh, the regulatory aspect of it. So these are highly trained professionals who will assist us in our surveillance programs and even the licensing and certification. Now the others will also be in air navigation services. Those guys who say clear for takeoff, clear to land. We need more of those people. We need more aeronautical information officers. We need more engineers. So we're talking about highly skilled jobs, which will be very well paying so that they can make positive contributions to this economy. And in addition, even our support services who are professionals, we will need more accountants, we will need more planners, we will need more lawyers. Uh, so we're talking about the entire organization and its directorates require additional staff. And that's why it will be as high as 300. So KCA is upscaling. We are not downscaling because of the growth and development of civil aviation in Kenya. These people are critically needed into the future. And uh, how is the plan of recruitment? I mean, now I know there are proposals, but do you plan to poach? Do you plan to get fresh graduates? What is the plan? Uh, both. We're looking for already qualified personnel who are out there in the industry and also looking for fresh graduates uh, in the various sectors to come and join us as uh, graduate trainees so that we can grow them within our system. And I would say that it, it will be 70-30, 70% new young people joining the industry and we develop them through our system and 30% already qualified professionals in the various fields. So for the youth, it will be good news. And also we really have to talk about the state or the aviation sector in the country. How has it been operating? Because you now see that there was a staff shortage. How exactly was the KCEA operating with the shortages? We were operating well. We were, operating, we were being able to do our surveillance program, but not as intensely as we would have liked to do. So we would do our, our regular annual inspections, but the ad hoc or the random inspections were limited because of the limited number of people that we have. But that is not to say that we're not doing our programs. We were. It's just that we were short-staffed. And I said, it's the same globally with all civil aviation authorities. Nobody has the real exact required number of personnel. So we'll always have some kind of a shortage because these, these people are few. The qualifications are very technical. Not everybody is able to, to, to become a, a safety inspector, for instance. So, but we're looking at an improvement, a great improvement in our surveillance capability and oversight. Captain Kibe, why increase the ad hoc, you know, the impromptu visits? Is, this, is it because airline operators are behaving badly? Why exactly do we have to increase surveillance? No, they're not behaving badly. It's just that we have grown so much. These low-cost operators are now so many, okay? So we want to be able to do ad hoc surveillance uh, inspections at any time just to ensure that they're, they're complying with our regulations. So it's a, it's a normal part of our job. So in an area where we're seeing massive growth, we need to also concentrate our surveillance activities in that area, even as we do the other uh, aspects of our surveillance program.
Speaking of decongesting, we have to talk about Wilson Airport because at the moment it is handling a lot of capacity. Are there plans to decongest the airport? No, Wilson Airport is, is handling more than a million passengers now and it was designed for like less than half that capacity. So Wilson Airport is congested. And so the Kenya Airport Authority, we're working with them, it is their airport, and they have short-term, uh, medium-term, and long-term plans for the development of Wilson Airport. For now, in the short term, they want to concentrate on the repairs and rehabilitations that they need to do. And in order to do that, we are proposing that uh, some of the large aircraft which are operating there, occupying a lot of space, be moved to Jomo Kenyatta for Kenya Airports Authority to be allowed to conduct its rehabilitation program. And while we're doing that, we're going to come up with a master plan for Wilson Airport to, de to decide what is the extent of aviation that we want to operate out of that place. Wilson Airport is the third busiest airport in Africa. You may not believe it, but the amount of movements in and out, they're tremendous. Yes. So, and you know, we don't expect any hiccups because of this. And uh, you're speaking to the operators. How soon do we expect the process to actually start, the big aircrafts, aircrafts to, be, to be moved to the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport? That will be determined once the uh, Kenya Airports Authority tells us that they're ready now to accommodate the 20 to 25 aircraft that will have to move from Wilson to Jomo. So once they inform us when they'll be able to, to, to be able to accommodate those aircraft in terms of parking and also in terms of operation. We're looking at uh, Terminal 2, where they can be doing their uh, departures and uh, arrivals, but they'll also require a parking space. So that would be on the other side of the airport, on the Embakasi side, near Kenya Airways headquarters. So once they clear uh, that area, they, and they'll let us know, then we will advise the air operators which is the date that would expect them to, to shift so that uh, Kenya Airports Authority can do their job. And of course, finally, there have been concerns in relation to air travel because following incidences and accidents this year, and you know, like you said earlier, there have been quite a number of inspections, even as far as from the Americans about two weeks ago. What exactly do they check on, and how can you assure Kenyans and the world that air travel in the country is actually safe? So the FAA, and the TSA of the United States and ICAO, they come and s audit us for compliance of the eight critical elements that I described. Critical element one to critical element number eight. So all those 10,000 standards and recommendations are cascaded into the eight critical elements. So, so they come and audit on aspects of our implementation and effectiveness and oversight based on those eight. So it's a very complex thing, but reduced to eight critical elements. And so that's what they come and inspect, because that is the measure for oversight capability of a state or a country. So um, we have been doing well. We have been doing very well uh, by those international organizations. Yes. So they gave us a clean report card that was about two weeks ago? That is correct. Both the FA and the TSA. So we can say Kenya is definitely open for air travel? That absolutely. And so we're encouraging Kenyans and the people who live in Kenya, make your bookings now. Festive season is here. Book your flights on, on all the licensed operators that there are. Thank you so much, Captain Gilbert Kibe. We have been speaking about airport security and, of course, touching when it comes to air traffic and also the security situation in the aviation sector. He did, of course, highlight the fact that there have been quite a number of challenges when it comes to having the right staff for the job. He did say a number of quite a number of new employees will be hired in a bid to bolster security and bolster surveillance. And at the same time, he said, hey, Aviation is open for business in the country and Kenyans can fly in and out as well 